Welcome back to another video of Behind the Brand. So today we are in Harrogate. We've got two things to do really. So we're working with Asheville School today. So we run a lot of our race clinics with them. We've got a really good relationship with the school. So first thing we're doing is a site visit for the upcoming AP Race Clinic with Luke Greenbank, one of our sponsored athletes. And then the second thing we're doing is I'm doing a talk for their sixth form speakers event. So like I mentioned, they've got a so we've got a really good relationship with the school. They have a series where they bring different speakers into the sixth form. Uh, so I'm going to talk today a little bit around my journey through life, I guess. So, th so my sporting career, what we do now with the brand of AP and, um, and the things we do at Asheville College. So yeah, we're going to take you along for the ride and show you what we get up to. mentioned my name is Ed I'm 24 years old I'm a British record holder I'm a youth Commonwealth Games champion now the generation of social media and the world we live in now especially kind of your age group I think you're all 16 to 18 is um, that's what runs your life right so this is what I would probably call the Instagram version of my life and I just think this world that we live in now of social media is so important to understand what you see and what the actual story is behind that yeah. so um, but if you are parts of a sports club there's always going to be a couple of kids who want absolutely nothing to do with the sport. So if it's swimming, they're at the back of the lane, everyone's lapping them, they're getting cramp every single second they can, so they can miss as much training as possible. Any excuse to get a session off, that was me. I was literally the laziest person in the whole swimming club. And it was only a very, very small club. There was about 40 members. Everyone was voluntary in the club in terms of the coaches, the, the people that worked for it. But I was the laziest swimmer by far. It was, I knew what the coaches were saying about me. I knew how much they hated me being in the pool. But I just didn't care about it. I loved being in the water. But the actual hard work, I just had no passion for at all. Um, but as mentioned, I was homeschooled. So my only social circle was swimming. I didn't have friends outside of swimming or the other sports that I did. So as some of my friends started getting better and better at swimming, they would go to a national championships, for example. So they'd spend a week away from home. They'd have a great time. They'd swim really well. And I kind of wanted to go there and I wanted to be part of it. Not because I wanted to swim well or perform, but because that was my social circle. They were essentially going on holiday and swimming as, as my friends, and I wanted to be part of that. So I remember I was, um, I was 13, and we used to train every day of the week, so Monday to Sunday. And I went into the pool on a Sunday afternoon to do a really, really hard session. Of course, I wasn't going to try hard. But, um, but I said to myself, when I walked in the doors, I said, I'm just going to give it every single thing that I've got. Um, and I just want to see what happens. And I remember two hours later, we were doing this swim session and I was lying on the poolside, like finished the set, climbed out, like literally collapsed on the poolside. And I remember I sat up after a minute or so and I like look around, literally as I'm looking at you here, and I thought to myself, there's no one in this pool that could have pushed harder than I did there. In that last two hours, no one could have done that better than me. And I thought a little bit bigger. I thought, well, if I go and race at the county championships in a couple of months time, Surely no one else could have pushed that hard. And the more and more I thought, I just didn't understand how someone could have pushed their body harder than I had in that two hours. And that was why I call it the moment. It's so cheesy, it's cliche, it's awful. But I always call that the moment in my life where I said to myself from then, whatever I'm asked to do by a coach, anyone who worked in the club, I'm going to give every single thing I've got. I decided that was the, that was the day. Everything was going to change. Some, some lessons from my life, I guess, that I've learned. Um, is independence is absolutely key. It's the most important thing. As soon as we start saying that person is responsible for that, that person should be doing that for me, you know, they're accountable for that. It's not my fault. You know, the most important thing is we're in, uh, sorry, the most important thing is we're independent, responsible, and accountable. Everything is our own choice, and it's our decision to make sure that we always take control of our own lives. Um, everything is not even half of the story. Everything we see is not even half of the story. Like I said on those very first slides, you see Instagram, you see you know, someone's life on the outside, it's not even half the story. You have no idea what is going on for people. Never, never judging people on what you see on the surfaces, I think, is really important as well. Um, believe in yourself, your dreams, and the visions you have for your own life. I cannot stress this enough. If there is something you want, I guarantee you, I guarantee it's possible to make it happen. But you have to believe it's possible. And that's the difference you see between athletes that do really well. You know, they make a national championships. They make a, an Olympics or a world championships. 
the ones that believe more than anything, almost to a stupid extent of belief, where you're like, you just can't seriously believe you can do that. They are genuinely the ones that change the world and do things that people didn't think were possible. It often is as simple as just believing in them. Um, and then the last thing I put down is I don't believe anyone was born without the capabilities of doing something special. I don't believe that people were put on this planet or you know, put on by God or whatever you believe in to just be normal. I just believe we all have a passion. We all have a something that we think we can do in life. And I think it's just about taking that opportunity. No one was put on this planet to be average. No one was put on here to be normal. But it's about being, taking your passion, whatever it is you want, and chasing it no matter what. And if it doesn't work, keep chasing it, keep chasing it. If you believe it, you'll make it happen. From sport, uh, hard work and details beat absolutely anything. I, the level of detail I go to in some of the work we do is ridiculous. People we work with absolutely hate me for some of the amount of times I make them change things, say it's not good enough, repeat, repeat. Um, the detail is the most important thing because you'll go to some, someone's event and you'll be like, oh, that was really good, but the biggest thing for me is there can never be a but at one of our events. It can't be, oh, that could be better. It needs to be the best. And when everyone says, oh, yeah, we'll have a go, we'll see how it goes, and then we'll try and make it better, don't. Make it the best you can ever make it straight away and work hard to do that. Um, there's always a way, there's always a way. Um, when I swam, like I said, whatever it was, if it's changing a training program, if it's changing something, if it's you know, eating better, my lesson from sport is there's always a way. If you want it that bad, you'll make it happen. Uh, discipline takes over when motivation fails. Um, so much of the time I wake up and I'm like, oh, do I really wanna be waking up at 4.30 this morning to go and sit on my laptop or do whatever it is? You know, not every single day I wake up and want to do it more than anything. But that's where discipline takes over. If we know that's the decision we're making, and we're accountable for that decision, discipline will take over because we're not all motivated. Not every Olympic champion wakes up in the morning and goes, oh, I can't wait to go swimming today. It's going to be so fun. Obviously, it's not. It's often cold in December or whatever it is. But discipline takes over when, uh, when motivation fades. So I've just finished the talk that we were doing there. So we talked around my journey as an athlete, as a swimmer, then how we transitioned into the brand, AP and then the work we do with Asheville at the minute as well. So um, we're gonna have a look around now at the venue and then we're gonna have a look where we're gonna be holding the race clinic for Luke later this year. Sports Hall here, Rob will be doing his gym session with Luke. Well, as we go through here, this is where our parent supports. Oh, look your eyes. Funny. Hello. Is that Adam B? Might be. Oh, that's exactly what I talked about in the talk, actually. About how far against the rest of the world. No. Ahead of everyone's records. Where would you be? The starting block still. Great. Funny. He'd still be in the car. Okay. <laughs> You'd still be waiting for the noodle. <laughs> 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 and, then, and then this is where we'll do the, the parent support station. So we'll have a stage built um, with the speakers and stuff like that. And Kev will be doing his parent support station with the projector here. So as mentioned before, this is where we'll be doing Luke's AP Race Clinic, where we focus all things backstroke. Luke is a double Olympic medalist, world champion. So um, all things backstroke on the 16th of April. So this is where we'll be doing that clinic. This is obviously the pool. We'll be doing a gym session, psychology session, uh, session which is the most important thing probably um, in terms of swimmers taking their performance to the next level. And this is Asheville College, like we mentioned before. So this will be the third clinic we've done with these guys. So this is a really good relationship we've got with this school specifically. Like I mentioned, we were just doing that talk there as, um, as a thank you to them for being so great to work with. They're one of the pools that we've got an ongoing relationship with. They're always super good to us. So you know, it's always good to make sure that we're helping them out as much as possible. But 16th of April, the booking link will be down below here. Make sure you sign up. Double Olympic medalist, world champion Luke Greenbank will be teaching you how to do the very best backstroke you've ever done before. So don't miss out.